The following video series are aimed at candidates about to sit their clinicals and vivas of the FRCS trauma and orthopedic examination. These videos are there to help and aid in your revision, and the focus is really on high yield diagrams that you should know for the vivas, but in particular the basic sciences viva, but similarly these can crop up in your trauma adult path or peds and hands. I didn't find particularly useful the static diagrams uh, without a real-time explanation whilst I was revising and I therefore found it more useful uh, when I was practicing with other people trying to articulate the answer whilst you draw. Remember, this is a talking exam. You've already got the knowledge having completed section one and now is the time to try to articulate your answer. You should always try practicing and drawing at the same time with an explanation and try to make it like a tutorial for the examiner to show that you really do understand the subject. The other thing to mention is that you only have five minutes per segment in your uh, exam to, to get your point across in the viva section, so be concise. For example, in your basic sciences viva, which will be 30 minutes long, you'll get six questions at five minutes each. So your diagrams at the very maximum should no longer be, uh, sh should be no longer than five minutes and in fact should be much shorter than that. Now, you notice that some of the videos uh, are well beyond five minutes and um, there are a couple of reasons for this. Firstly, I really wanted to explain the drawings well and to elaborate on multiple connected themes. However, in the exam, you may only need to use a small section of what's in the video to explain your principle or to get your point across, but I found it more useful for revision purposes to amalgamate related diagrams. Secondly, um, these videos are purely a regurgitation of what's in my head a couple of days following the exam, and I wanted to get all that information down and recorded so that you may notice uh, some kind of toing and froing and reiteration of multiple points, and I apologize for this in advance. Moving on, you'll notice that the videos are simply made from an A4 sheet of paper and one pen, and I purposely didn't use uh, multiple colors because I wanted to mimic the exam scenario exactly, and where you'll have just, well, one pencil and an A4 sheet of paper. And the benefit of this is that you can see the diagram drawn and explained in real time. My advice would be to practice drawing as much as possible and with other people and try to get feedback. Are you speaking too quickly or slowly, or are you getting your concepts mixed up? You can even go to the end of the video and pause it and simply use the still shot to practice right at the end. It's also important to remember that in your exam, the vast majority of the Viva questions will start with a clinical scenario or an image. So it's really important that you link the diagrams to a clinical application and explain this while you are drawing. And hopefully these videos will help you with this. Now comes the disclaimer. Now, this is the way that I've learned to draw the diagrams and a lot of it is taken out of books and other resources, but the explanations are my own interpretations of how to describe them. There are obviously multiple ways to describe the diagrams and you may think that there are better ways or even that it's outright wrong, but hopefully not. Uh, but you may think, I like this section, but not this section so much. So you can pick and choose and hopefully come up with your own interpretation that works for you. So use it as you will, uh, but hopefully overall uh, it's, it's just useful and um, helpful for you guys. The last thing I wanted to mention is the marking structure of the clinicals and vivas. And the reason I wanted to cover this is because although stressful, you need to look at the wider picture and know the number of scoring opportunities that are available to you. Uh, and this, I think, just gives you a bit more of a perspective of where the marks truly are. So broadly speaking, your exam is divided up into your clinicals, which are one hour long, and your vivas, uh, which are two hours long in total. Your clinicals are largely divided up into your intermediate cases, and your short cases. Your intermediate cases you have two of, and they are total 30 minutes, so 15 minutes each. Uh, and 
you have one upper limb intermediate and one lower limb intermediate and spines can crop up in either one of those. In your shorts you have six short cases which total 30 minutes again and these are divided up into three upper limb shorts lasting five minutes each and three lower limb shorts which also last five minutes each and again spines can crop up in either one of those. In your vivas you have four tables and your four tables are 30 minutes each of basic sciences, adult pathology, trauma, and children's orthopedics and hands. And it's quite important to know that your children's orthopedics and hands table will be examined by a pediatric orthopod and a hand surgeon. So these are 30 minutes each. So now to the scoring structure. So in your clinicals, your intermediates in your 15 minutes are divided up into five minutes of history taking, five minutes for examination, and five minutes for discussion. Now, you have two examiners examining you in each station, and each of them will give you a mark out of, out of eight in four domains for your clinicals. And the domains are readily uh, available on the JCIC website, but they are the domains are overall professional capability and patient care, judgment and knowledge, quality of response and bedside manner. And each of those four domains are marked out of eight. So your examiner will each give you a mark out of eight for those four domains. And the examiners aren't allowed to discuss their marks, so they mark completely independent of each other. So for example, one examiner may give you uh, a seven for your knowledge and judgment, whereas the other would give you a six, and that will average out as a 6.5 for your knowledge and judgment for that particular part. So for history taking, for example, um, you'll get a 6.5. So in those four domains, you'll have so, sorry, in, in history taking, you'll have four scoring opportunities, one for each of those four domains, which will be an average of your two examiners. Again, you'll have four scoring opportunities for your examination and four scoring opportunities for your discussion um, in, in those five minutes. So you have overall 12 scoring opportunities for your upper limb intermediate. And again, similarly, 12 scoring opportunities for your lower limb intermediate. In your shorts, is a bit more simple to understand. Each are five minutes each. So, and, and, and in each um, station of your upper limb uh, shorts, for example, one of the, uh, each examiner will give you a mark out of eight on those four domains, similarly, but you only get a mark out of, uh, you only get a scoring opportunity, four scoring opportunities in, in each short case. So again, you'll have 12 scoring opportunities in all of your upper limb shorts and 12 scoring opportunities in all of your lower limb shorts. So in total, your scoring opportunities in your clinicals are out of 48. And you have similarly, uh, 48 scoring opportunities in all of your vivas. However, they don't use the same domains because obviously you, you're not marked for bedside manner for your vivas. Um, but in your viva station, your 30 minutes are divided up into six segments of five minutes each. So you have six question stems of five minutes. And in each of those questions, Every, every examiner, so you have two examiners, each examiner will give you a mark out of eight. So you'll have two scoring opportunities in each of those questions. So each Viva table, you will have 12 scoring opportunities to total 48. So in total, you'll have 96 scoring opportunities in the whole of your exam. And you just have to average out a pass, which is six. So your pass mark is 500 
and 76. So it's, it's very simple. If you get 576 or above, you pass. If you get 575 or below, then you fail. And, um, and, and that's why it's much quicker to mark your clinicals and vivas, and that's why you get your results, uh, because it's, uh, you, you get your results much quicker because it's fairly black and white. And the maximum number of marks is 96 times eight, which is 768. The reason it's important to understand this is because if you have a bad station in your viva in one of the questions, you only mess up two scoring opportunities. And at worst, really, you'll probably just get a five. Um, but the wider picture is that that's only a sixth of the amount of scoring opportunities that you have in one of your intermediate cases in your clinicals. Or conversely, you can look at it as one whole viva table is equal to the number of marks in one whole intermediate case. So if you score really well in one intermediate case, you can make up the marks very easily if you just have one bad question station in one of your viva stations. So I suppose the point is, if you have a bad station, just put it behind you, move on, is unlikely to affect your overall uh, outcome. And, and really where the marks are, are your intermediate cases. So do not neglect revising for your clinicals. And these are easy marks such as bedside manner, being nice to the patient, smiling. These are things that we do day to day. So these are really, really easy marks to pick up on. So I hope you found this useful. And lastly, uh, I just want to say good luck to you all. Uh, and hopefully you'll find the rest of the videos useful.